From New York, it's that Kevin show. See, I knew it. Ah, uh, come on, Kev. What's a few classified documents between friends? I told you. I told you all the time. I knew it. I knew he had some, too. Here he is. That Kevin. Kevin McCullough. Welcome back from Times Square. It's Kevin McCullough, and uh, super glad to have you with us at That Kevin Show. And one of the reasons why we're having a lot of conversations about policy and the elections and all that stuff is because we're less than a month to go. And friends, it's I I cannot entreat you um, heartily enough. It is important that you get out and vote and let your uh, choice and uh, expression be counted because that is ultimately what it is to be a citizen to help self-determine where we go as a country uh, you know that we like to check in with the independent women's forum every week and i am pleased to welcome back a longtime friend and as stepman who is the senior legal and policy analyst that's a mouthful inez uh, but basically you're like watchdogging things that are coming to legislatures uh, federally and locally and, and everywhere else trying to help women be aware of what people are putting forward is is that a is that a safe summary of your job um in part yeah but uh in, in this case we're looking at a um, constitutional proposal in, in in new york state and i really think it's just being if it's discussed at all it's being discussed in such a misleading way that it amounts to really trying to dupe voters well here's the thing and you 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 start out with a good point i'm in the new york market I cover this, I cover issues that relate to family and public policy and, you know, the welfare of our country. Until I exchanged texts with you just a couple of weeks ago, I had never even heard about this amendment. So walk us through what they're doing and what it would mean to the state of New York. Yeah, so this is this is something called Proposal One. Um, it's a, as you said, it's a state constitutional amendment, meaning it would override the legislature, right? So, um, and it's being sold to the extent, like like you said, I haven't gotten any advertising about this as a voter. I mean, living in the city, I haven't heard anything about it as a voter. I only know about it because I'm following it for work. It has gotten really not a lot of coverage. And to the extent that it's gotten any coverage, it's been framed as an issue about abortion, right? Um, and the reality is, of course, that New York is a liberal state and we have very liberal abortion laws already in the United States. And this... Only a very small piece of this amendment has anything to do um, with abortion. It goes much further in, in other areas. Mm -hmm. And those other areas are that it essentially redefines sex in the state, right? It grants um, very, very broad, quote unquote, rights on the basis of gender identity, meaning men will have the right to go into all kinds of women's spaces, right? We're talking about sports teams and, and bathrooms and locker rooms in K-12 and New York universities. We're talking about um, prisons, which is a, a, a thing that has been going back and forth in New York about transferring men, oftentimes with sex crime records, because they say they're a woman. A lot of them have no history of identifying as a woman, right? Um, no, no surgery nor, nor hormones, um, but, but actually transferring them into women's prisons and locking them up alongside women, right? So um, this amendment is extremely radical. It also affects parental rights in the schools with regard to things like gender ideology and parents' right to know what their kids are, are um, you know, identifying as at school. So this is a really, really radical amendment where even in liberal New York, I mean, I know, you know, Kevin, you and I are in New York. We know we're in the minority as conservatives, right? Right. Um, but this is not something that the voters of New York would accept if it were actually, you know, presented to them as what it's it's doing. And, and that's why they're selling it as an abortion only. I, I think very you're, radical. I think you are completely 1000% correct on this. And it sounds to me, you know, my audience is probably one of the only audiences in the country that really is kind of educated on everything that you were talking about in terms of general uh, principles, because we've had IWF on and, of course, Kelsey's great work with all of her films. Um, but it sounds to me like this constitutional amendment for the New York state constitution would basically codify every single one of the worst things that we've discussed on this show over the last year. And I don't, I don't, I don't think New Yorkers on, on the whole, you just walk down the street of Albany, Rochester, New York city. I don't think New Yorkers on a whole think that men should be in girls' bathrooms. 
I, I don't think that normal people think that a man should be housed in a uh, prison cell with a woman um, who's probably bigger than her, who's probably stronger than her, and will be locked in. Uh, talk about an invasion of privacy. Talk about the um, the kind of disrespect for women's safety. And as we've been we've been preached at for years from the people that are supposed self proclaimed feminists that the reason Title IX, the reason that you they even made arguments for the ERA and other things, is because men were given more favorable treatment than women in the in the lot of life across America. This seems to be a complete reversal back to that, but not just in life in general, in the most sacred and what should be the safest places that women can inhabit. Right. There's just a total lack of acknowledgement that there are any biological differences between men and women and that those differences might actually matter in, in and particularly in the situations you're pointing to, right? Um, you know, those those biological differences might be irrelevant when it comes to like who who's a, a journalist or <laughs> some of Correct. these like, white collar situations, but it's very relevant if you're in close quarters in an incarcerated situation, sharing showers, sharing, you know, eight by 10 foot cells with men who are not only physically stronger, often have sex crime records, right? right. This is the most obvious and common sense kind of uh, threat to women's safety. And I just to back up what you're you're saying about even, you know, sort of liberal New Yorkers, um, and, and not wanting to go this far. I mean, we know when we pull these kinds of questions on prisons, on sports, right? You get a majority even of moderates and Democrats who say, no, this is not right. It's not right to put um, a, a, a man in the women's locker room. It's not right to run boys in the on and the girls track team, you know, a boy right. who gets the cutoff for his no, own. This is 80, 95 percent agreement uh, across this, the, the this political is something spectrum where you, we have agreement between the left and the right. Um, and, and again, that's why they're selling this proposal one as something uh, that it, it really isn't right. They're trying to, to skate it by as though it's it's protections for abortion in New York. And it's way, way more than that. So. Part of um, your colleague Kelsey Bowler's work at the Independent Women's Forum has been to produce a number of documentaries that have touched on some of these issues. Um, but the the prison issue is the most recent one that she's done. And this this would bring that California nightmare to New York. Friends, we have to stop this. We have to spread the word and you have to you have to. And when we come back, I'm going to ask uh, Inez. Um, you know, who's who's pushing this forward? You know, what's what's the group behind it? Because it's not the, the, your average, um, lit, you know, legislator didn't wake up in, um, uh, you know, Orange County yesterday and go, oh, I've got an idea. Let's make this the constitutional amendment to, for the year. Uh, but the fact that they've been so quiet about it and they've said absolutely almost nothing uh, in the media means that someone's trying to pull something over on us. And thankfully, the Independent Women's Forum and Inez and her team are speaking out. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll get into that. And is this a precursor to what um, a difference could be depending on who, which president, uh, presidential candidate we end up electing? Uh, what What's the policy records of the two campaigns? We'll delve into that a little bit. 